Hey there. Uh, I've been messing with one of these Waze cameras, and I had a little bit of trouble following some of the instructions on GitHub. Um, I just wanted to throw in my two cents. Uh, I guess the biggest one in those instructions is that, and my camera doesn't do this anymore because I've disabled all the applications, but um, I believe when you hit this button after you've done the firmware, um, you'll get the Chinese lady saying something, and then you'll get a fast blinking light right here. It'll go from solid to fast, or maybe in my case, I think it was blue and amber, and then it went to fast blinking. But once you've got the Chinese voice, um, the device is actually in <clears throat> AP mode, so you can find its access point that it is running, like on an Android device or what have you, um, and it'll DHCP you a, a, an IP, and then you can just um, connect to the device. At that point, you can insert the card, and when you get the two bongs, um, it'll go bong bong, you can then load the website by going to the IP address blah blah status like the instructions say and at least from there you can uh, run the networking script and get it on your network initially um, so you can get an SSH prompt going and be able to figure out why the scripts are busted um, I did not well I, I took quite a few routes and I eventually uh, I eventually got this thing to the point where it wasn't trying to get on a network um, following the instructions I never saw it try to get on my network so even though the dot ESSID files were in the right place and the scripts were obviously running um, it never attempted to get on my network and so I'm just going to show you what I did to solve that it's not necessarily applicable to you and and certainly um, I've got another camera on the way so I can start off with a fresh one and take a look at, at what I might have done incorrectly um, so I guess the hope here is that it might help somebody <laughs> um, this is the actual live stream so you can sort of judge the latency for yourself um, and you can see the load of the RTSP server that's running on the camera um, in the terminal there so you know it's not too bad um, the this uh, uh, this camera here is a right here is a C920 um, and the light levels in here are not that great um, so let's see what was one of the other things that I found shit I'll have to I, I also found something that um, talked about the lights, which let me let me see if I can pull that up real quick. In fact, I'm just going to hit pause here. Okay, so this PDF, um, which I found at some like FCC site, but this explains what um, what some of the crap is. Um, And looks like it's kind of clipped here. There we go. Um, but the the gist of it is uh, the the lights. Um, so a solid yellow light. God, where the hell is my mouse? A solid yellow light uh, means it's powering on um, and initializing. So essentially. You know, you know, unless you've already hacked this thing, um, that light from the factory just means it's booting. The flashing yellow light, um, this, after you flash the firmware, which, um, you know, just involves, uh, from the instructions, it just involves um, holding, holding this before powering up. You've already got your SD card in. So you hold this, you power, you hold it for about 10 seconds, and then you just let it do its thing. Um, and, I, and I don't recall 
what happened with the light back here, but but you need to give it time enough to actually flash the firmware. Um, and I didn't have a problem with that part. The the way to verify that you flashed the firmware is that when you reboot, if you just you know hold this for about two seconds, you'll you'll get the um, you'll get the Chinese lady asking something. I, I wish I knew what it was. And this will change to a fast blinking light, and the device will be in access point mode. So, like I said, uh, at that point, once it's in access point mode, you could find it. You could find its access point using Android, and then maybe scan the network with Thing, or um, you know, and then just use your browser to go there. And it's easy enough to to reconfigure the network. Uh, using the browser to then put it on your actual Wi-Fi and have it get uh, access to the, so that you can SSH into it. Um, you can also stop and start the script. So um, essentially if you hit the button and you put it in access point mode, you access it with your laptop or your Android device. Um, if the website, if the status website isn't there, just insert the card, and after it goes bong bong, the status website will likely be there. And then you can start scripts to start SSH, or you can, you know, if you're not on a laptop, you can reconfigure it to go in the network. Um, but it's only going to be temporary, at least in the current state um, of what I ran into, and I didn't do a ton of debugging. Um, but this is what I did to, to fix it and make it survive a reboot, ultimately. Um, so let's just see if there's anything else first in this PDF, actually. Uh, flashing yellow and blue means it's looking for some wireless, whether that's your wireless or what, I don't know. Uh, flashing blue light means it's actually connected to a wireless. A solid blue light, I'm assuming, means that it talked to the cloud and something happened, something app related. Um, but this flashing yellow light by default means it's an access point mode. Um, so as for the, yeah, the stuff. So the files, um, there, there was sort of some question about the SSIDs and, um, and little dot config files. Um, and basically, basically, as far as I can tell, the the card when you stick in this uh, this card and it mounts it, um, by default, the firmware is looking for this SNX auto run. So this is your entry point into when you initially stick in the card. Um, I don't. What I don't know is what happens during the firm, firmware rewrite. Um, obviously this is the firmware and and when you're doing the firmware you you do the long press before power and then you apply power and then you hold it and then eventually it does the firmware. I don't know um, on this firmware if that still works and I also have a suspicion that the applications that I've stopped are what was running this button. So. Like obviously you can see my light is solid, but this thing's obviously on my Wi-Fi network currently. Um, and so I'm, gu I, I'm guessing that some of these applications, which again, this is the flashed firmware, but uh, I don't remember where they were. They were somewhere in here, it wasn't Neo. Fig. That's where the Fang hacks actually put stuff. So those those should have your stuff, even though the way I'm gonna do it, it doesn't work. Um, I also found that this um, this Wi-Fi type, and I, I don't know if this is applicable at all, but um, this uh, Wi-Fi type, um, it, if you're running WPS, or if you're running WPA2. Um, that's type five. I think like one is open, two is wet, and three is 
WPA1, and um, I can't remember, I found some Netgear documentation talking about the, the various numeral types and what they mean, but, but five would be your typical Wi-Fi setup with WPSA or w, WPS2 or whatever, whatever the hell it is. Um, so then there, there was also, um, oh yeah, here's, here's the actual application. So they're still there. Um, and obviously after the firmware, the initial firmware flashing, like I, I camera was running and some other stuff was running. Um, and I, I think one of those was actually the thing that was also running the LED. Um, but whatever, I, I don't really know what this stuff does. I've disabled it all. Um, you know, but it seems like since they're there, you could maybe fire them back up again. Um, and then there was, uh, there was one other config. Oh, this fang hacks. So this is what I ended up messing with. Um, I got this far by manually putting it on my wireless. Like the fang hacks were enabled. The stuff that was in Etsy config were copied. So these files were correct. Um, the disabled cloud was still zero and the network mode was cloud mode, which as far as I know means it's going to come up and want to connect to an access point, but it's still also going to want to, you know, uh, connect to something out on the cloud or how, you know, whatever's going on there. But w what I did is I, um, I disabled the cloud by setting this to one, like I just edited this file. And I set the uh, network mode to one because I wanted it to use my access point. And at that point I rebooted and I basically just locked myself out because what happened was the, the camera was still booting. Um, it was coming up in a state where it was looking for uh, some Wi-Fi, the LEDs were not, the LED was not doing anything. Um, and I think that's a result of the, the applications not running. Um, so the only way to recover it was to, uh, was to hook up a, an actual, like a FTDI or, you know, to, to wire in the console, which is like under one of the ribbon cables. Um, I didn't actually find it. I had to go look at pictures, but it's under one of the ribbon cables. You just hook up ground, transmit and receive, um, and you'll see the thing boot if you connect at 115K, just with screen or something. Um, you'll see the thing boot and you can get back, you can get, log in with root and the creds work. Um, so it's not bricked. Uh, and then what I saw was, uh, I basically saw this, um, WPA supplicant was running and in this dash C is the config file, which is referencing something uh, like it, it's not a fully formed path. It's just a directory. Um, and it was, referencing that data directory that is on the SD card. Um, let me just make sure. Oh no, so it actually was. I was probably looking at my terminal. Let me, uh... Yeah, so probably at the time, this is what I saw. I was like, oh, that's weird. But this is what was actually happening. So, um, so that's not bad. So if you go into um, that media directory, and, and if you actually look at that uh, WPA supplicant, which actually give me a second, I want to put in some test creds. So you'll just have to suffer. I'm just gonna have to suffer here as I also figure out how to run. 
how to run this OBX studio shit. Um, I don't know why this even matters. <laughs> I don't know why I care, but you know, it's just the the person in me won't let me put real creds of any kind. Um, so yeah, so it's looking for this. Um, that is on your card. So you just edit that put in your SSID, put in, change this PSK to password. You could also probably generate a proper PSK string. I didn't care, I just put in the password. Um, and then as long as the stuff in Etsy, the thing config stuff, as long as cloud is disabled, uh, hacks is enabled, you probably will already have that set. And the network mode being one, as soon as that network mode is one, uh, is when it appears to fire up the the thing looking for the access point there. So, um, yeah. So I think I think if you get if you get the um, if you get the the prompt here. When you, when you click that after you've booted up and it says something in Chinese, the light changes to a fast blinking, which means it's an access point mode. If you insert a card, a card and it goes bong bong, then at that point, um, you, you should just be able to go edit that config file in Etsy and then edit the WPA supplicant file in, on the SD card itself and then you should be able to survive reboots. So um, that's where I'm at now. Um, I'll just reboot this guy real quick. And in fact, um, God, I keep clicking on the not terminal. Oh shit, I better make sure I didn't, I put fake creds in there. See, I was about to lock myself out again. Although I could fix it by just editing the, the SD card again, but you can't really, fix that config file because it's it's in the real Etsy and there's also like a um, and like I said I haven't put all this stuff together but there's a config that back and I don't I don't know if Fang hacks is checking it like you know the only entry point that I know of is is the one that's in um, was it here no the one that is in yeah, this X S and X auto run. I mean, this is what gets run when you when you put in that SD card. And I don't know if it only gets run at boot. I don't think it does. I think I think because after you get the bong bong, and uh, so when when you when you put the card in and it goes bong bong, I believe this script is being executed because uh, it it seems to create these uh, these symlinks which are needed for the website um, unless those were there and and it didn't yeah I don't, I don't really know like I said I haven't really debugged this stuff too much um, okay so yeah so put so so put it in access point mode log into it with your laptop um you can you can fire up you know the drop bear using the scripts in the website or you can put it on your network and then visit the little local website and fire up drop bear sh into the thing if you're like me and you don't want any of these services just at you know edit edit the uh the thing hacks uh config file Disable cloud, put it in a proper Wi Fi client mode, and then make sure that uh, 
your WP8 supplicant stuff right here is configured correctly, and then you'll be ready to reboot it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch my I'm gonna switch my thingies. this dude and you know if worse comes to worse if you <laughs> if you have uh, oh, there we go. yeah th this is how I just watch the thing DHCP I've got syslog forwarded from my from my router uh, to syslog on my normal this this host here and so I just watch the thing boot by by grabbing for DHCP, which actually I'm surprised it hasn't already booted. It reboots pretty quickly. It's gonna make me a liar. I probably just fucked up my camera again. <laughs> I probably just fucked up my camera again. Be so pissed if I I actually uh, I had the the uh, I had this shit soldered in and uh, I actually was live streaming using the camera and unsoldered that connection. I hope I didn't just ruin it because I didn't see it DHCP. That's for sure. That's so awesome. Okay, yeah. So I'm gonna pull the SD card out, and I'm gonna go make sure I didn't fat finger something in that file, and then um, and then I'm gonna put it back in. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try booting again. Um, let's see if I broke my camera. Okay, yeah. I I had fat fingered it. Um, so let's see. So we'll look for we'll look for DHCP. Um, I let this has been powered on the whole time since I left. I I pulled the card out. I edited that WPA supplicant file. Fixed my fat finger. Um, so now I'm just gonna power it off and reboot. Better not have fucking busting my camera. I do not want to. There it goes. <laughs> so, uh, I think now, let's see if OBS joins the live stream again. Yeah, so there's the RTSP firing up and all that. Um, so, yeah, the, you know, besides, I'm, I'm going to get another one. Um, I do want to run through the scripts a little more. Um, don't know where I found that PDF, uh, and I don't know how to post that to YouTube, but it, it was like a two-pager, so that's probably not worth anything. Um, but I did find a, a few cool links, um, <clears throat> a discussion of various binaries, um, some audio examples, you know, piping audio from from the mic to, to a remote device that is capable of running netcat or something like that uh, and vice versa where you can go from netcat to speaker or if you have a process somewhere you could spew audio at this thing and it will play it out of this in fact I, I might even maybe we could, we could actually run one of those I bet um, yeah, let's see. I've probably got those socks in. Yeah, so here, this, this, oops. This right here, um, 
says to me that it's it's using no uh, netcat to hit that port. Um, it's piping it to socks and uh, converting it. Huh. Okay, let's go look at this website. We'll go look at it together. Okay, cool. So um, this is um, this is not the open IPC, but this is maybe where Bang Hacks originated for the other camera that this one's based on. Um, but DVV was nice enough to supply some pre-compiled binaries, um, which is so awesome. Um, and this Mosquito client, um, it worked for me. I didn't successfully send an image. I think I, I either was using RTSP and so I couldn't access and capture possibly or um, but I could certainly send and receive you know do pub sub with with uh, MQTT so that thing's super awesome there's a couple of working examples down below the sound or uh, SNX audio is is uh, gives you basically this uh, SNX audio record and then I think there's also a play yeah this playback um, that'll get you in and out you know That'll get you microphone input and speaker output um, for different things. And then, uh, like in this example, um, this is, I guess this is like the equivalent of a Netcat type service. Um, so it's listening on this port and must be sending it to the audio record with these, with these values. So it looks like a, a 16K stream is what it's expecting. Um, and and the file is standard standard input um these i don't know what these are doing but they're obviously setting some gpio and that's what i want to know more about um because that also might have been where i had problems uh doing captures uh single snapshot captures but uh so let's just run through one of these examples um remote mic to local speaker um in this case uh, derp. Remote mic to local speaker. So yeah, so we want to run this. Now that looks like the thing that's connecting. Yeah, okay, yeah. This is this is the recorder going to standard out. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's the piece that we'll run on um we'll actually run on the box on on the little oh my god, this is too inception y for me to deal with. Um So I'm here, we'll run that. Okay, so that's listening. Um, and then on the other side, on my local machine, I'm just gonna run the, there we go. I'm gonna run, uh, God, I keep clicking on the video instead of the thing. Um, yeah, I'm going to run this, which will connect to, uh, but I'll put my IP in here for my camera. Um, we'll connect to my camera on that port that we have listening up here that is then sending standard out from the mic. Um, and then we're going to pipe it into sock and do a bunch of shit. And I assume, I guess socks just plays. I actually don't know a ton about socks, but. But with any of these little embedded devices, um, you're often having to work with a, a different audio format, or you know, or like in this case, it's it's like a raw format since it's coming straight out of the the microphone. But um, but whatever, we'll just see this little example and make sure the uh, 
the thing works. And I don't have another terminal being streamed, but um, but I'm literally gonna run that command with my dude's IP. And, oh look, I got a nice underrun. Unable, oh, unable to open device. Yeah, okay, so, interesting. So this is the error that we actually got on the camera. Um, and that is likely because we are running and even accessing this RTSP uh, server. I forever do this. There's no options there. Yeah, so that guy is running the RTSP server. So he's actually using the mic as well as um, the camera. So with him gone now, let's reestablish that, okay? And then now we'll connect from my box to it. Cool. So I do get some errors on my side, but um, I don't know if this is coming across my desktop or not. Uh, huh. There we go. There we go. Well, I hear it here. I'm not sure if it's in the video or not, but I can hear myself talk over myself. Anyway, the mic works. Um, yeah, and all these great examples here uh, worked. The, the one that I did have trouble with that if anybody has insight to would be super cool. Um, this right here, you know, you're basically, um, I guess, I don't know if they compiled motion to just call, you know, with like a very simple config to call uh, send.sh on trigger. No, to listen for this as a trigger event and to alarm, call this whenever an alarm happens. Um, Actually, these are both just publishing. I, I'm not sure what the order of operations here is, but uh, but the problem I had was uh, it bitched. This MJ Peg one I did not try. Yeah, so this. SNX ISP MD simplified to just call alarm motion when motion detection status change. So I see this using motions built in uh, motion detection and then just calling the script and spewing out this. And I thought the goal was to actually send an image. Let's see if I can get my facts back. This, I believe. It's for sure an image, and that is send. I didn't have another example of send. So I can show you real quick the error that I had. I don't know that this is productive, but uh, uh, where did I put all the crap? I, I think to install this crap, um, I also just. Uh, you know, I, I haven't expanded these file systems or anything. I haven't done any of that stuff. But, um, but in data, no, in here, I just built the apps directory. Um, and, it, and I was able to unzip the stuff. So I SCP'd this stuff over um, into this directory. And then I just unzipped it here. And then, um, you do need to make everything executable and then just put them someplace where they are uh, accessible. Um, so yeah, in my case, that's where the path was. So I think I ended up just putting this stuff in like data bin or something. Yeah, that's right. So I just copied them all there and that, that was the install process. So. Um, but don't forget to make your alarm.sh and send.sh do things. So, uh, what was my point? 
Yeah, so SNX ISP. So we call that actually get a sick bolt on that guy. <sighs> Why? So this is a mosquito uh, dude that I set up and it's kind of bad. I'm expecting to call it from my working directory, which, you know, it is there. Oh man, it's just testing snapshot. Yep. That's the one I was testing. So <coughs> I don't know. Maybe um, motion needs to be recompiled. Um, there were also some links where people downloaded the SDK, and there are some old thing discussions about uh, setting up a Docker and um, you know all that crap, so that you can build. You basically you can compile your own stuff. Um, I haven't done any of that yet, so uh, I guess I just wanted to see if I could help people with, with the lights and the order of things, but um, I, I will throw whatever links I've got that I thought were interesting um, down below, and uh, yeah, that's all I got. Apparently my USB stuff is so loaded up right now that my camera also quit working right here. So I'm going to go. Hope it helps. Thanks.